Well, welcome to our fall initiative that we're calling Focus 2020. I'm so glad that you're part of a, a life group or you're talking about, about this with a friend. And very simply, what we're asking for is as a church, we're asking for God to renew our focus. And so we're kind of doing a play on words. First of all, it's Focus 2020, meaning that in order for me to see clearly, I need to have 2020 vision. So in order for me to live life, and to see life more clearly, I need to have a better focus. But we're also doing a little play on words with the year 2020, meaning that is, you know, less than uh, 18 months away. And so we're asking the question is, what would it look like for us as a church to approach our mission, our God-given mission, with more focus, leading up into the year 2020. And very simply, uh, our mission is we want to make more disciples of Jesus. And more disciples of Jesus is simply this. We want to help other people love and follow Jesus as a way of life. So love means entering into a relationship with Jesus that's real. How do I love him more? And follow him means how do I trust him? In other words, am I going to take him at his word? How do I trust him with what he's got to say on life and then obey him? And how can we help each other do that as a way of life? Meaning, with our families, at our work, in our communities, how do we help each other love and follow Jesus as a way of life? And here's what we learned about focus some weeks ago. We learned this, that the condition, we learned this from Jesus, that the condition of my heart determines my focus. So it's not just about willpower. It's not just about, hey, if I do these 12 things today, I can stay more focused. It's not about that. Jesus actually has said that my heart actually determines my focus. He said this in Matthew chapter 6, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Or the message says this, it's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and you'll end up being. And we know this is true. If we look at our time, our energy and resources, where we put all of that is really where our heart is. We pursue the desires of our heart. And so for this first question or this first lesson, we got want to ask the question, what is my heart condition? In other words, where's my heart really at? And to do that, I'd like you to open your Bibles up to Matthew chapter 13, where Jesus talks about our heart condition, and he's using a parable. It's a parable of a sower or of a farmer who's sowing some seeds. And the seeds represent the kingdom of God. In other words, the message of Jesus and what it means to love and follow him. And the soil represents our hearts, the condition of our hearts. And so the first question around this, or the first soil is, is do I have an unresponsive heart? And Jesus used the illustration of seed falling on hard ground. And here's what he says about that in verse 19. The seed that fell on the footpath, the hard ground, represents those who hear the message of the kingdom and don't understand it. And the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in our hearts. So these are seeds that fall on hard ground or hard hearts. Hearts that are just unresponsive to Jesus at all. And these are hearts that aren't even asking questions. Maybe, maybe they're hearts that are going through religious rituals. Maybe you can even be in church and have a hard heart where you're just totally unresponsive to what Jesus has to say. And here's what I know when soil is hard. What often happens, if you plant uh, soil uh, in a hard ground or you have hard ground in your garden, what do you do? You plow it up. You dig it up. And very simply, I think that's what God often does in our lives as well. Uh, through circumstances in our life, through other people in our life. He plows up that hard ground for the purpose of planting his seed in our hearts so that it actually grows. And so that's the first question. Do you have an unresponsive heart? Second heart is, do I have an inattentive heart? This can be seen in verse 6 about soil that fell on the shallow ground. But Jesus explains this in verse 20. The seed that fell on the rocky soil, the shallow ground with rocks underneath it, represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. And I think that's the soil where people often hear about Jesus. They get excited at some message or a Christmas service or an Easter service, or maybe they go off to a Christian concert. And they get real excited about what Jesus can do for them. But as soon as life gets hard, as soon as there's problems or troubles, they begin to question it all. You know, oh, I didn't sign up for this. 
and they really have used Jesus. It's all about what Jesus can do for me, and they're never pursuing that real relationship that wants to love and that wants to follow, and that's an inattentive heart. It's a, it's a heart that doesn't give much attention to Jesus. Now, we know in our other relationships, if we want those to do well, we have to give attention. We have to give attention to our spouse, if we're married, or our friend, if we want to have a good friend, or even our kids. If we want those relationships to grow, they require attention. And yet there are times, I think, we all come in and out of seasons where maybe even our heart feels like it's grown cold toward the things of God, but chances are, many of those times, our hearts have been inattentive. We haven't put ourselves in what I like to call the path of grace, spending time with God intentionally to have our roots grow deeper into Him. And so that's a question that you have to ask yourself. Uh, is my heart been attentive or inattentive to the things of God? The third soil, and I think this is where a lot of us are, if I look at my life, if I look at the life of people, and I would say uh, in our church or maybe even in our community, and that is, do I have a deceptive heart? Other seeds fell among the thorns. And here's what the thorns mean, verse 22. The seed that fell among the thorns represent those who hear God's word, but are too quickly, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by what? Worries of this life and the lure of wealth. So no fruit is produced. In other words, a deceptive heart is a distracted heart. And there's a lot of things we get deceived by. And a lot of those things are good things. You know, we can try to get life for, for ourselves from our job or uh, life for ourselves in our hobbies or oh, if I just go on vacation and we, we pursue all these things, a new house, a new car, whatever that is, our hearts are so easily deceived in thinking that if I could have all of these things or if I could have maybe that, that one more thing, that my heart would be satisfied, that my soul would be satisfied. We even do that with our families. We can pour so much time and energy into our families, only in the end to come up kind of empty around what our souls need. And that is because our souls were made, were created by God to be satisfied in Him. Not that we can't have some satisfaction in those other things. God gives us those other things as good gifts from Him. But ultimately, our souls, our hearts are most satisfied in our relationship with Him, in being a part of what it means to love Him, to know Him, to follow Him, and to trust Him. And so that's a question we have to ask ourselves. And, and, and it's really a hard question. This is why I'm so glad you're, you're having conversations with other people, because very often we can't see a deceptive heart. Why? Because we're being deceived. We need to be in conversation with others who might even point out that deceptive heart, or might even be able to help us see those areas that we're pursuing that just aren't giving us life. And finally here, the, the question is, do I have a receptive and a productive heart? And this is the soil that was the good soil. Verse 23, the seed that fell on the good soil represents those, and this is really great, I want you to understand this, represent those who hear, in other words, who are receptive, and as they understand God's word, they become productive, and they produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as been planted. So if we want to be productive in life, if we want to have good outcomes, if we want to, you could think of it as reproduce ourselves in the goodness of the love and the joy and the peace we experience from Jesus, if we want that, if we want to have those good outcomes in life first, we have to be willing to hear, not just hear, but understand, and that means apply Jesus' words to our lives. And what I've come to know over the years is, is while preaching is great, I mean, obviously I, I do it every Sunday morning or most Sunday mornings, for people to really hear God's word and understand it, they have to engage in relationship with others around it. And so I am so encouraged that that's what you have decided to do today. And so here's what I want you to do. There's three or four questions uh, in your lesson. I want you to take some time, take a moment before, and, and pray that the Holy Spirit can kind of lead you through those questions. And as you do that, specifically today, I want, the, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to, to bring some light onto your heart. Like, where's your heart at today? And then talk about that. Talk about indications of your heart. Talk about how you can encourage one another to have more receptive and productive hearts. And then some action steps. In other words, how can you pray for one another? What might be going on in your life, uh, a prayer request that you can pray? Not so much maybe prayer around the circumstances of your life, but how is your heart responding to those circumstances? 
How can you encourage one another? What might be some action steps with how you can encourage each other to stay more focused into what Jesus would have for you? Well, once again, I'm excited that you're choosing to meet together with some other people and just be encouraged because I know as you do that, God's going to use you to help somebody else love and follow him more. Let me just pray for you. God, I just would pray that as uh, this group or as this person or these group of people meet together uh, to talk about your word, Holy Spirit, would you grant your encouragement? Would you grant uh, conviction today? Uh, Would you grant conversation that as they talk, uh, they might be able to see a little bit more clearly where their heart is at? And God, we know you're the only one who can change hearts. And so we ask that for all of our lives that you do that work in our hearts today. This day, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for being part of this great Focus 2020 initiative.